Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, I ask you to do three things, to like, comment, and subscribe. I also ask you to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. This will help us get the gospel of Jesus Christ worldwide. I am excited to welcome you to episode five of Saturday Conversations. Today's episode, I pray, will be filled with encouragement and inspiration in Jesus my name. Today, I have to bring on a guest that I've known over 10 years, and I love how God is using him in the body of Christ. So please help me welcome to the conversation, Tanner Lakey. Tanner, what's up? Yo, what's going on? Good, man. How you been? Dude, I've been living the dream, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what they're saying, 2021. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we're going to forget about the whole pandemic. That old things have passed away, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> 2041 now. We're way past that. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, Tanner, to the conversation. I'm so glad we're able to fit this in your busy schedule. So before we go into the topic, um, let's introduce yourself to the people who don't know you. Cool. Yeah, man. Honestly, thank you for, uh, one, creating this platform, too, and asking me to, to join in. Uh, it's a huge honor of mine. Obviously, we kind of go way back. Um, just so all y'all know, um, Ed and I, we met probably what, 2010? Yeah, around that time. Yeah, yep. 10, 11 years ago, um, West Texas A&M University. Go um, Buffs. Go Buffs, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down here in Miami, Florida. You know, I think you know, Edward's over in Chicago. So it's cool how um, even just getting brought back together. Um, yeah, I moved down to Miami right after graduating uh, undergrad, came down here for law school. Um, originally was going to go the sport and entertainment route. Um but life has led me to be a trial lawyer for the greatest law firm in the world, Morgan & Morgan, um, for the people. So uh, quick shout out there. But um, I just love how like, God's like, kind of like changed my life for sure <laughs> since we, yes. you know, we uh, were living in undergrad. And then obviously just seeing everything he's doing to you is, is really awesome. So um, honored and glad to be here, man. Yeah, it's crazy how we got reconnected last year at um, My Church's Advance. And I didn't expect you to be there. I was like, he's still, and I was like, Lakey, is that you? He's like, hey. So, it's a full story, full story. You know, we're just going to dive right in, just be completely transparent here today. Um, so I was, uh, yeah, I went to City Church Chicago um, to their advance. And advance is basically like their servant leader getaway weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not a retreat. It's an advance. The leader uh, <laughs> we advance. Exactly, exactly. Um but yeah, so I was actually in the bathroom and um, <laughs> my pastor, um, we were like opposite walls. Uh, like there's two walls and urinals and like we were just talking. All of a sudden I hear this guy's voice like, Lakey, is that you? I was like, what is going on? Like it's going to look weird, man, but <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but it's funny. Yeah, so it's definitely a small world story up there. Yeah, so, maybe I should have uh, waited until you finish. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but it's all good. I I, I just heard the laugh. I'm like, that's a that's a laugh I know. That's familiar. <laughs> and I was like, wait, wait, hey. That's awesome. That's awesome. Way too funny, man. Yeah. So is that it? I know you don't like talking about yourself, but yeah, I hate talking about myself. I don't know what it is. Like I love talking, but yeah, I'd rather ask questions. I'd rather get to know other people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so yeah, so I'm living down here in Miami, Florida, uh, good old Sunshine State. Um, you know, I've been down here. It's almost seven years now. So it's wow, great. wow. Um, but yeah, just I've been part of a local church down here, Vu Church. Yeah. Um, shout out Vu. I was able actually on our launch team. So um, we just launched almost approaching six years ago now. Wow. Um, so really, kind of first year I was down here, I was able to get involved, plugged in um, with you know the greatest pastor in the world, um, Rich Wilkerson Jr. Uh, shout out I don't know. I, I don't know. Greatest pastor might be Pastor Kent Muncy, but I guess, I guess we let them decide. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But no, P. Rich is my guy, and uh, definitely honored to be under his leadership, um, and just kind of you know serving the local church down here in Miami, and um, you know, thankfully we had this pandemic, and we've been able to you know expand our reach, and I'm just crazy to see how God's even you know used covid for his glory especially if they're everything we're doing but definitely honored to be part of it um definitely under the, some of the best leadership in the world and uh yeah it's just cool to be a part of what god's doing down here in miami oh that's awesome and uh, y'all y'all bought some new property too 
Is yeah, that- man, it's crazy. So um, we've been praying for property for six years now. And um, yeah, we were um, towards the end of 2020. Um, this lady, uh, her name's Rodney. I believe I said that correct. Um, she came up to Pastor Rich and was like, hey, I, um, this crazy story, you know, we launched at this point five years ago and five years ago she had told, uh, or she got a word from God said, hey, build a, um, a building in design district uh, for my glory. And so she was just obedient and she built this building in uh, design district down here in Miami. It's literally like, you know, Louis Vuitton, the Gucci's, wow. like all the highest in source. Uh, are there and so just to say hey build a building here I'm not gonna tell you for what but do it and she was just okay and she built it five years later or she didn't even know who existed at the time but uh you know consequently five years later um we launched and she built, built this building she um knew that or she felt god saying hey Vu church is uh, what i had you build this for and so wow. yeah so we got this building and design district um really at such a discount rate i think the appraisal on it was seven to ten million and we purchased it for i think th- around three wow it was, so it dude just such a huge miracle from god and then um a couple months after that we've been doing and so that's going to be kind of more of a college space uh mm-hmm. headquarters um for us once we get that built out but we've been doing church out of uh, a middle school and a high school down here in miami so every single sunday whenever we're having in-person services we're having to load in <laughs> so set everything up uh yeah. people get to 5 45 in the morning wow after the last service today we have to load everything out and, you know so you know we'd be up there till 11 11 30 at night loading out um so we've just been praying for a building to be able to actually have sunday service yeah and um a few months ago, this uh, church down here, they wanted to, to, you know, basically gift us their church. Wow. Uh, they've been doing so. Um, yeah. So finally, we did purchase an actual church location down in South Miami. So it's been awesome just to see um, and really just like strategic areas in Miami. So it's like you can't you can't put give us any credit, anything. Okay. Oh, it's literally just God just opening doors and just miracles. So. Um, but the good news is, is, you know, we're only getting started. So yeah, that's still yet to come. What's crazy is, um, the same thing happened in Chicago for C to Chicago. We were looking for a building because before the pandemic, we were this at capacity. Like we were doing five services at capacity. Oh and, yeah. And then out of nowhere, the pandemic happened. And right before the pandemic happened, we launched our beyond campaign for the building campaign. Yep. So we we're like, then the church like, we want to be sensitive. We don't want to ask people to give while they're in a pandemic, but God supernaturally did what he does. And then we're able to close on the building like a couple weeks ago, not on the build on the property. And then we're going to start building on the property. And it's crazy how God, I think they said it was over a little bit over 5 million. Only God can raise $5 million in a pandemic. Like, <laughs> there, like only God <laughs> can do it. In yeah. Chicago, like it's not like in the suburbs of Chicago, like it's in downtown Chicago, like the place where they say churches go and die. That's where God is building his church. And it's crazy how God is building his church in Chicago and how God is building his church in Miami. Oh, like no right. one can no one can tell me that God is not real. No one can tell me that that God is not moving in the year 2021. If he can move in the year 2020, which is like the pandemic year, <laughs> right, he, right, right. he can move in the year 2021. So I just love how God is moving at Boot Church. I love how God's moving at City Church Chicago. And like you said, like the best is yet to come. Only getting started, man. Yep. Only getting started. Yep. So y'all see the topic. Y'all see the title. Y'all see the thumbnail. Y'all already know what we're going to talk about. We're talking about how to get fired up. There we go. So there something go. I realized, Tanner, is everyone has a gift God has placed inside of them. Uh, but some people don't know how to identify it. Some people don't know how to stir it up. But I'm here to tell you right now that there's so many things that are un, that's left undone because they never tapped into the gift or stirred up the gift God has placed in them. Right. Second Timothy chapter one, verse six says, for this reason, I remind you to, flat, to fan and to flame the gift of God. It's, it's weird how we talk about getting fired up and then Paul tells Timothy to fan and to flame the gift <laughs> of God, which is in you through the laying of my hands. So our hope in this conversation is that you receive practical steps 
on how to get fired up in your life, in your family, and in your community. So Tanner, my first question to you is, what led you to start Fired Up? Right, man, that's a, that's honestly the greatest intro I think I've ever, <laughs> <laughs> ever heard. Um, but no, so let's see, I think it was probably 2019, um, November, because it was a couple days before my birthday. I was over in Tampa, Florida for a work, um, okay. for a work event or yeah, just over there. I think I had some hearings, had to go visit some clients. Um, but one of my friends, he was over there and we were going to connect and I was like, yo, um, JT, shout out JT Smith. That's my guy. <laughs> um, you talk about a young legend right there. He's yeah. going to put his name on your, on your radar. He's going to be awesome. Okay. Um, but anyways, he was like, I'll, hey, I'll get, I'll get his information from you. I might have him come on a conversation one day. Cool. Cool. Let me, let yeah, yeah, connect. Yeah. I'll, I'll shoot over after. Yeah. Um, but he was like, Hey man, I promised that we're going to hang out, but I forgot I committed to going to this, uh, this men's, like all men's uh, service tonight. Do you want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure, let's roll. Um, so it was John Bevere, he's preaching that night. And okay. his word just hit me. And um, I just had this kind of thought, it was just like, man, like to get fired up. Um, yes. That's something that we always like kind of say down here. It's, you know, we're like, oh man, like let's get excited. Like, let's get fired yeah. up, let's get pumped up. Like we still have uh, work to do, you know? So um, the next day after I was just so moved by this, um, by this sermon, I was driving back to Miami. It's about a four hour drive. And I was just thinking about this concept of like fire, fired up, like so many different connotations, like, yeah, you know, fires get purified and, you know, the Holy Spirit's kind of referred to as a fire, but mm -hmm. also fire, like can destroy things. And so it's like so many different like, connotations and ways you can use fire. And <clears throat> I'm driving, you can't make this up. So there's this little strip in from when you're driving from Miami to Tampa, um, it's called Alligator Alley. And so it's literally just like an hour and a half of just a highway each side. I don't even know if there's towns like it's like driving through Panhandle, Texas. It's like, like, it's like 280, 287 South. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's nothing except just like swampland, right? Yeah. So swampland water in the swamp, right? But I kid you not, there's a huge just fire that like like a wildfire going on that people are putting out. So I'm like, oh my God, you're obviously trying to tell me something here. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I just kind of sat on it and was just playing around and just thinking through this. Probably, it was probably a few months. I kind of ultimately concluded that in life, there's like three different types of fires. Yeah. Um, there's the ones that uh, you put yourself in. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll kind of break these down a little bit. Uh, but the ones you put yourself in, the ones that you have to go through, and then uh, the ones that you're called to put out wow. in life. So that's good. It's kind of, yeah, just different connotations that I just kind of want to break down and narrow down. But it's like, okay, one, the one that you put yourself in, <clears throat> like if you're watching this, um, unless you're Jesus, um, you've probably made a mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, have you ever like done something stupid? Like, um, <laughs> you'll see, like it could be anything. Um, like say, like, I don't know, I hate using this example, but it's like, okay, yeah, Jesus, God, he didn't put you in jail. You chose to drink and drive and you got in yeah. car accident. Like that's your own fault. Like, <laughs> you well, know, or you didn't like, you, you didn't, um, Jesus didn't choose to get you fired. You just didn't show up on time every day. <laughs> God, why did you fire me? Oh, well, because you were not. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There's people that blame the devil. It's not the devil. It's your discipline. That's what got right. you fired. It's not the right. devil. <laughs> All right. Oh, I got this ticket. Uh, the cop, he's such a jerk. No, well, you shouldn't have been going 25 miles over the speed limit. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, uh, so it's the ones that you put yourself in, right? Yeah. Um, the ones that you go through. Second, um, like life happens. You know, family members get sick. Yeah. Um, you get laid off from your job. They're for getting fired. Like, yeah. A lot of people got laid off because of COVID this last year. Like, yeah. Especially, say, you worked in sports where, you know, sports pretty much died. Like, yeah. life happens, you know. You know, you have to go through things. Um, and then, ultimately, the fires that you're called to put out. And uh, to me, I feel like that's, like, the biggest one because, like, man, everyone has such a calling and purpose on their life. Like, you were even saying, like, people have special skills, talents that, oftentimes you know go untapped like the biggest yeah. um you know treasury in the world is uh, a graveyard right yeah where you know people just 
their ideas that could have changed the world and made so much money or whatever. They just went to die because they never acted on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just like three different types and just like how God can reveal himself in all three situations, how he can come into your life, how he can move in your life and how he can ultimately change the lives of others through all three different situations. So um, that's just kind of how it got started. Mm -hmm. um, just started by going to a, a service one night is I think it's like a Wednesday night. And then, yeah, just only kind of just like, I don't know, God just put it on my heart and I love speaking. I love encouraging other people. Like, yeah. Um, my kind of mission statement is life in life is to help people um, see more than in themselves than they ever thought possible and achieve more than they ever dreamed. So um, that's kind of what gets me fired up. And that's yeah. kind of what fire that I'm kind of called to put out is. And Tanner, you've always been a great speaker. I remember 2010 freshman, you, you went into your fraternity, then you took over ISC. You've always been a, a <laughs> great speaker. So I'm glad that now God is using the gifts he's given you for his glory. You know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. and I also want to like um, tap into something you said was like, no matter what fire you're going through, pretty much God is with you. So even if you made the mistake that caused the fire, God is still with you. Even if you, right. you're supposed to go put out the fire, God is with you. And then what's the third one? Uh, the ones that you put yourself in, the ones that you go through, the one that, ones that you're called to put out. So through that refining purpose, God is still with you. Like the right. three Hebrew boys, they got thrown into the fire. <laughs> but then they said, is, did we just put three in the in the fire? And it's like, why do I see the fourth one? He looks like a God. So God is with you no matter what type of fire you're going through. So my second question to you is, as you're starting Fired Up, and I know you, Tanner, I know, I know you. We've been knowing each other for 11 years, as you said. How did you overcome the need to be perfect to start Fired Up? <laughs> I'm honest with you, man, that's what took me about 10 months to, <laughs> from when it started actually doing it. Um, dude, I was sitting on this for a while. And yeah. um, ultimately, I think it was a combination of a few things. Um, realizing, one, you're never going to be completely ready. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of walking in your calling. Like You're never going to be completely ready for what God has called you to. And I think that's yeah. why... <laughs> That ultimately is what gives God the glory because if you're completely prepared, then you wouldn't need God. Yeah. Right? If it's true. something that was easily obtainable from you, you wouldn't need God. Yeah. Right. But it's because I felt I wasn't prepared because I didn't feel like I was creative enough. Um, you know, whatever it may be, because like as a lawyer, like, okay, when I'm not like digitally creative, like mm -hmm. if you ask me to draw anything, I will draw you stick figures. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like just being real. So in that aspect, I'm not creative, but I feel like God's really given me, um, a creative ability with my words, with speaking, with writing. Um, and so then, you know, also I, I feel like you can pull from different resources that may not always be Christian resources. Yeah. Um, so Gary V, um, yeah. was a big kind of inspiration for me. I, I um, like Gary, I like Gary V too. Bro, Gary V, it's cause it's like, man, like who cares what anyone else thinks? Yeah. And like, I don't know. I feel like you take what Gary Vee says and you take what the Bible says and they yeah. go pretty hand in hand. Yeah. Um, just one has a lot less uh, curse words. Um, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, like, PG version, who cares what anyone else thinks? Yeah. The Bible version is, you know, it only matters what God thinks. So if you're being obedient, then you should walk in that. Um, so, yeah, it was just, and what was the question? Uh, when, how did I overcome the? Yeah. How did you overcome being perfect, perfect. and start it? I just started doing it. And like, I think the biggest thing for me right now is like scalability. Yeah. Right. Because I can't do everything. Like this vision that like, God's put my life for, you know, fired up is just like huge. Yeah. But I, I know I can't do this yet. So let me start right here. Um, so just start off with like, you know, just daily Instagram posts, like mm -hmm. on my story, like, um, Something I try to do is like label each day. Like, thank God it's Monday. Tackle Tuesday. Make it moves yeah. Wednesday. Like, just label each day, and then every day, just you know, post as a reminder to people, and then just follow up with like a quote or scripture, um, just some sort of additional resource. Mm -hmm. And then um, from there, kind of like it's dialed in like this. Making moves Wednesday. Yeah. Um, it just like triggered. I was living in uh, this house, and one of my roommates was like. 
man, like, I was like, hey, how are you? It's just like, oh, like, I hate today. Like, today sucks. I'm like, you know what? No, it's not. It's a Wednesday. You know what? Let's go make some moves today. And that's literally just how it started. Like, that's how I came up with that. It's like, no, let's go make some moves. It's making moves Wednesday. Like, that's what we're going to do. And then literally that night, like, <laughs> both we came back and it was just like, it was like praise reports, you know, like, oh, this wow. happened. In my life. <laughs> you know, like, it wasn't really called that, but it's like, oh, like, this happened. And they're like, oh, I got a new job. And I told you we were making moves today. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, that's just become a big day. I feel like Wednesdays is one of those days where I people are like, oh, it's hump day. I'm just trying to get through. It's all, mm-hmm. I get through a day. It's basically the weekend. It's like, man, let's like flip the script on that. Like, yeah. Man, it, like, let's take this negative turn to a positive. So, instead sure. of, you know, I think that's a, such a day you can separate yourself. Because, you know, Monday, some people don't like to work. Some people love it. Tuesday, I feel like everyone works. Wednesday, if half the world is just trying to get through, but, like, if you're, like, trying to really break through, you know, yeah. like, you're going to set yourself apart so much. So, just on Wednesdays, I've started sending out these, like, weekly texts, mm-hmm. like, just in the morning. Um, you know, just an encouraging message just to get people, you know, kind of going in their day and just making, like, let them know, like, hey, like, whatever it is God's put on your on your heart, like, let Wednesday be the day that I actually go in and try to make that happen. So um, that's kind of where, we're, where it's at right now. But I, I see it like scaling so much more yeah. like videos every week, like starting, like, you know, just finding different ways and platforms to help encourage and motivate people to give chase their dreams. So, um, so yeah, I think that overcoming the fear of need, like needing to be perfect is just, man, just put it out there. Like figure out if you can't do everything, do something. Yeah. Because that's something it's going to snowball. And like, once you get in that habit and that routine, it's like, okay, now you can add on it. Now you can build on it. So it's kind of grow, goes and grows from there. So it's like, man, every morning I can't even leave my apartment before posting on Instagram. But, yeah. And it's not something I'm like, feel like I am burdened by, but it's just something like my brain won't function until I do that mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's just such a habit and a routine now. So um, that makes, that's really good. Cause like what I realized when you start walking in your calling, when you don't do your calling, now you're burdened that you're not even doing <laughs> the calling. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're not burdened by doing it or by or you feel this burden by not doing it, but it's yeah. such a blessing whenever you do do it. Yeah. Even the days right, like, man, I don't even know what I want to post today. Yeah. Like there's some Wednesdays you wake up, man, I've got nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's like some of those days where you just like force yourself to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. You don't want to that. I've had like the most responses back from, from people. Wow. Um, oh man, I needed this. Oh, you have no idea. Like how spot on this was, right? Like, yeah. Oh, a mind reader, like, you know, stuff like that. So it's like, that's what's encouraging to me is man. Like, even when you don't feel like doing it, even when you feel like what you're doing is, you know, mediocre, like God will take that mediocre and still bless somebody with it when you're walking or calling. So that's so good. Oh, um, one of my favorite characters is Moses. He's my second favorite character after Jesus, of course. So it's crazy, like when God the called Moses. The subject, remember that. Do what? So Jesus isn't the character; he's the subject of the Bible. Think about that for a second. Uh, that's that's true. That's true. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> Someone told me that one time. I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> so with Moses, I remember when God called him, he just asked him a simple question. He's like, "What's in your hand?" He was all like. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't speak. I can't lead. He's like, what's in your hand? Right, right, right. And it was a staff. And the thing that was in his hand is what led 2 million people outside of Egypt to the promised land. So it's so crazy how you just need to work what's in your hand. Like, exactly. like you, all I have is an iPhone 6. You better work it. <laughs> all I have is an Excel spreadsheet. You better work it. Exactly, exactly. I, I, all I got is some pen and paper. Work that pen and paper. I want that paper filled with the vision God has given you. I want that paper filled with your dreams and goals. Because what I realized, Tanner, is God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for faithfulness. Absolutely. And that's what people don't understand. It's like, I got to get this. I got to have this connection. I got to make sure it looks like this. I got to have this job title. Like, let's yeah. talk about that for a second. Like, yeah. If you're a server at a restaurant, like so many people look down on that but yeah how many people do you interact with every day that you can be a blessing to them yeah like like just be faithful where you're at because what i realize is if you're not faithful in the in the little things god would not make you ruler of many things like matthew 25 verse 21 says 
the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small amount. So now I will make, I will give you many more responsibilities. Let us celebrate together. Yeah. So it's just crazy how like when we're when we're faithful in a little bit, Jesus wants to celebrate with us. He's wants to celebrate with the little. Exactly. But, but people want to say like, oh, I need to, like you said, I need to get this position. If you're at church and you don't, you're not, you don't have, you're not on the platform. If you're at church, you don't have the pastor title or the team leader title. Be faithful where you're at. Oh man, that will preach for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to be in the parking lot, but that's where he's called you to be. That's where he called you for this season. Right. <laughs> but it's so the parking team at any church you're at. Like I, I lead the parking team. So <laughs> I started out, start out in the parking lot. I started out in the parking lot. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, but man. the thing is, God would not call you to preach if you're not faithful in the parking lot. Right. That that's this point blank period. It's like, I want to change the world. How about you change the world of these little kids? in your kids ministry before you change the world right 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 i know something my dad <clears throat> said i don't even know when it was a long time ago but something that's always stuck with me because he uh he was a youth pastor okay uh, at church for a while um and he always said two things like one like if i would continue to be have like been leading like the youth ministry it's like me and your mom probably would have gotten divorced wow um and two he's like um, he's a cardiovascular ultrasound technician, so mm -hmm. um, big fancy words for he looks at hearts and veins through ultrasound for yeah. people going to surgery. Um, but he's like, I've been able to minister to more people as an ultrasound tech than I ever would have done on a platform. Yeah. He's like, because your ministry is ultimately wherever God's put you, right? Like you don't need a platform. Like you need, like it's not about a platform. It's about the position of your heart, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, That's God, good. If, if you're obedient and if your position your heart's position is God, I'm going to serve you wherever I am at. And that doesn't mean just at my job. That means walking down the street and if God tells you, Hey, this homeless person right here needs some food. And you, are you going to be faithful in that moment? Even when it's uncomfortable, even when yeah. you're busy, even when you have somewhere else to be like, can you take that five minutes to go inside, you know, 7-Eleven and just get them a, like, a sandwich? Like, you know, so if you're faithful in all of those things, like God's going to put you where he wants you mm -hmm. and you're going to be fulfilled no matter what, because yeah. people want the platform. But if that would have destroyed my parents' marriage, like, I don't think that's where he, my dad needed to be. So I'm just thankful he was attentive to that. And like got out of that because you know, I probably wouldn't be here right now if it, <laughs> for, for his obedience and faithfulness, you know, in, in the eyes of the church, like, oh, he's, not called to this he mm -hmm. you know, what's going on like no he's just being obedient yeah and like obedience is always better than the platform <laughs> I, because everybody's like i want to be known i want to be seen i want to get my followers up followers up on instagram be obedient and the people will come right the right people will come the right people yeah because yeah. you have people in your life that are not right and it is like take the life from you and then now you doesn't want to you don't want to operate in your calling because you're drained because the people came but it weren't it wasn't the right people who came exactly exactly so do you want to add anything else to overcome the need of being perfect I think I think we pretty much hit it right there <laughs> yeah that's good stuff that's good stuff so my third question to you Tanner is how can a person because you talk about the three types of fires in question one so my question to you is how can a person tell the different type of fires they're in um, I think it's pretty simple, to be honest, um, and that's to look backwards and look at the choices that led you there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, what is it, uh, like, I forgot what the quote is exactly, but it's like 10% of life is what happens to you, 90% is how you react yeah. to it. Um, <clears throat> I think if you just look back and you're like, all right, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. Like, I was here, how did I get here? And if it was a direct result of your actions that you took, then I would say, you know, that's definitely probably a fire that you put yourself in. Yeah. Right. And that takes being honest with yourself, which is oftentimes the hardest thing to do <laughs> is people want to believe that they never make mistakes. Yeah. And so if you can be honest with yourself and Hey, I screwed up. <laughs> like, I think that's step one. Like <laughs> looking back. Okay. Yeah. That's where it all went wrong. Oh yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to that party. Oh, maybe if I didn't go to that party. I wouldn't have, 
done this, 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 and this. That maybe I shouldn't text that girl at 2.30 in the morning. Maybe we, we should know better. Maybe I would be a dad on the way. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, for the record. Uh, this is an example. Um, praise God. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, so it's like, man, like, if you can be honest with yourself and be like, yeah. hey, it was my choices and my decisions and my actions that ultimately led me here, then I think that's really step one to realize, hey, like, okay, I probably put myself in this fire. Now, how can I get out of it? And how can God lead me out of it? Right. But if you can look back and say, I honestly had no control at all over the situation. You know, I had no control over my mom getting cancer. I had no control over, you know, getting furloughed from my job because of a pandemic. I had no control over, you know, so it's like, okay, you're, you're going through something right now. So it's like, okay, God, like you're putting me through some sort of fire, some sort of test. Um, like, what do you want me to learn from this? Yeah. Right. Because I think he wants to teach you something in every season of life, no matter yeah. what you're going through. Um, so even if you put yourself in that, it's like, okay, I understand, God, I screwed up. I'm here. Please help lead me out of it because obviously I can't do it on my own. Yeah. <laughs> I just tried that, and that's why my life is burning up right now. <laughs> um, but what do you want me to learn from it? Because if you don't learn from it, you're often going to go back in a circle and go back through the same yeah. fire, right? <laughs> um, until you learn your lesson and get better from it because you can learn something but still choose to you know go through it anyway mm -hmm. um you can choose to get back into a toxic relationship yeah like let's, let's, let's talk about that real quick um, all right here we go yeah. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk so, about it yeah there's so many people that they they rather be in a toxic relationship than be single for a season why mm -hmm. I know you're in Miami. Um, I know the, the women, they look good over there. Like, why do beautiful women subject themselves to toxic relationships? And I know you're not a woman, but. It can, it can be guys, too. Um, yeah. Guys subject themselves to toxic relationships. Or yeah. Like, we're not going to segregate, but obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 like, it's always the girl's fault, right? <laughs> uh, but it's not. It's also true. Um, yeah. I think some people just get comfortable with it. Mm. I think they would rather feel some sort of safety and security, even if it's something that's so toxic and negative and dragging them down mm -hmm. um, versus leaning and trusting on God and going into the unknown. Because I feel, especially like our generation or our age right now, like we went to call, I grew up in and went to college in Panhandle, Texas. Yeah. Uh, right? You were, you grew up where at again? Uh, Dallas. Dallas. That's right. So I don't know if it's the same in Dallas, but in Amarillo, Texas, you go to high school, you go to college, you marry your high school college sweetheart by the time you're 22. If yeah. you're 23, you might be a little late, um, but we'll give you some grace there. Um, <laughs> you, know, you, you start working, you know, a couple years, you have kids. By the time you're 30, you're probably done having kids already. You've already had two or three. Yeah. And that's a cycle that, and the culture of, you know, the Panhandle, Texas. Mm -hmm. So now I'm staring 30 in the face and I'm like, man, I am single but i chose to follow the calling that god's put on my life yeah went to law school went to miami and moved down here and like other people that are our age right now and maybe the same as chicago but people are so just want to be married right yeah and <clears throat> i think because they want that they tend to force relationships mm -hmm. and they ultimately get into relationships that god never called them to yeah or told them to be in yeah and so then if you're outside of god's will for your life and that's automatically toxic but it's that being so scared of being alone for the rest of your life that you, you're willing to put up with something negative instead of getting out of that situation and moving to what god's called you to wow i don't know that's just my thoughts on it what about you what, what do you what do you think about it i i agree with you i think like the whole um I just want to be in a relationship because, you know, now we're in a social media age. It's not really cool to take pictures of yourself. You always got to take a picture of. So I think that plays a big part because mm -hmm. before we were growing up, it was like keeping up with the Joneses. We didn't know who the Joneses were. We were just some neighbor that they just did better than us. But now you can see the Joneses on Instagram. You can see the Joneses on TikTok, on Facebook. And now you see that this person who's four years younger than you just got proposed to. So name this stuff, you know, be stuck with this guy that doesn't treat me well, 
but he buys me McDonald's every once in a while. So that's better than nothing. So maybe it's a step. Right. You know what I mean? So I think we just have to realize that sometimes when God calls you, there's a season that you're going to be lonely. You're going to, be, you're going to feel lonely. I never say you're going to be alone because the Bible says God will not leave you nor forsake you. So he's with you, but you will be lonely. And I remember a couple of weeks, probably a couple months ago, I had this talk with God. I was like, I'm 30, going to be 31 this year, single. I was like, God, if you want me to stay single, like the Apostle Paul, and, <laughs> and I chase after you, that's fine. I came to the to to the to my mind. I made my mind made up that I would do it. But then God said, no. he's he's like, don't be, <laughs> don't be too rash now. Calm down. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I really think it's because people are just comparing themselves to other people and they say, and they just want to say like, oh, this person just has this, but you don't know what that person is secretly going through. So I think comparison is a big thing is what leads to people staying in toxic relationships. And comparison will also kill your contentment. Yeah. Right? Like whenever you're constantly, you can keep it up with the Joneses, like Joneses. Yeah. In Miami, like, okay, if you just see the cars that are being driven around on the streets. Yeah. Like, dang, what am I doing wrong in my life? Like, why am I not driving this Lambo, that Ferrari? It's like, well, <clears throat> you're not driving it because you probably didn't rent it for the day like that guy did. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, but if you get so caught up and consumed by that, mm-hmm. man, dude, like, and I think that goes back to, you know, the fear of producing content or whatever it may yeah. be. Like, getting over that fear of perfection is because <clears throat> you can't compare yourself to what someone else is doing. Like, mm-hmm. The stuff I'm p- posting is not the flashiest. It's literally black and white. Like, because that's, I'm just, I don't have that creative ability. And I yeah. you know one day I'll hire someone to do that creative stuff for me, but I, I don't care because I don't care that, you know, my content may not be as cool or hip or trendy as someone else, but it's like, no, this content that God's put on my heart. So I'm going to put it out there and believe that's going to bless somebody because I'm following the will for God mm-hmm. and you can't, get, you know, don't get distracted to the right or left. But if you just focus on like what God's called you to, yeah, you know, let that be your goal. Let that be your mission. <laughs> and it's like running on a track, right? If we're talking about relationships and someone, I think it's pastor Ridge or someone else like was like, all right, no, just run your race, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. And every once in a while, just look over. Yeah. And if someone's right there with you, all right, cool. Hey, hey run your race. And if yeah. they're still there after another lap, all right, maybe you should ask them out. Maybe, you know, whatever it may be, but it's not searching and striving for something that and trying to force the hand. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's so many people down here, like setting goals. Oh, I'm going to be a relationship at the end of 2021. Yeah. And announcing it to the world. Well, okay. One, that makes you look desperate. Um, Two, that means you're trying to force God's hand. Three, Mm -hmm. once you pray about it and pray about God's timing for your life, because if you pray about it and ask for his timing, then it doesn't matter what year it is, but it's going to be the right season for you. Yeah. Because you heard someone say this one time that you rather wait than marry wrong. Because I truly believe that your spouse is connected to your purpose. So if you marry the wrong spouse... (laughs) You won't, you know what I mean? So like all the stuff that you're going to do, Tanner, like you will probably need a patient spouse who's understanding that, okay, Tanner's not going to be here this weekend because he's out speaking somewhere. You got to have someone who understands that because you have someone who's, because what I realized is like there's two types of spouse. There's someone who's going to compete with you or someone who's going to compliment you. One of the two. So your job, or I guess our job is to identify the wife that compliment us, the one that's from heaven. Don't get anyone who's going to compete with you because it's going to be a headache. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> How am I supposed to be like, what about, what about this thought about competing for you? Oh, I like I, that. I'll give my spouse this month. Like this week, I'm going to serve him more than I, like she can serve me. Yeah. Like think about that, but I'm not trying to like outdo each other. Like, oh, I'm doing way more than you, but like, yeah. you just have such a love for the other person that mm-hmm. you're like, man, like. I want to just continue to give and give and give to this person because yeah. like, I don't know. I just the thought just came across my mind. So I like that. So pretty much, I'll serve. I'll serve your spouse. I think. Uh, I think us uh, two single guys are making some relationship. Uh, some relationship goals. Some marriage goals <laughs> here, right? <laughs> I know. I know. Shout out Mike Todd, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you have anything else about 
the fire you're going through? Identify, man. Yeah, I think it's just honestly, you just got to be real with yourself. Um, because if you can't be real with yourself, who can you be real with? You know, that's true. Um, you can put up a front for so long, but ultimately, like your true colors are going to show. So if you can just be real and honest with yourself from the start, you can identify whatever season of life you're in. And once you can identify that, then you know how to attack it. And then you know what to pray and how to pray and ultimately like how God can lead you out of it. And so I think how do you identify is just being real and honest with yourself. That's good. Yeah. My mom always says, um, the worst person you can lie to is to yourself. <laughs> That's the worst I'm thing. wise woman. <laughs> so I, I just love it. Yeah, you just have to be honest with yourself. You got to look back and take inventory. Like, how did I get here? Like you were talking about. Was it because mistakes I made? Or is it because God is trying to take me through a season? Right. Or this is just life happens and now I just have to deal with it. Exactly. Or exactly. like, do you see someone that I need, I need to go help them. I need to go help put their fire out. So my question, my follow-up question to that is, how do you, how do you, what am I trying to say? Like when you see someone's fire, how do you know that's your fire to put out? <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, man, I think, so when I talk about this putting out fires, right? Mm -hmm. The way I've kind of thought about it is you have, I guess, talk more business term. You have micro fires and, and macro, right? Yeah. Let's start with the macro. I feel like the big calling that God has for your life. Like some people, man, what's my purpose? Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, God, what, what do you want me to do? Why did you put me on earth? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, shout out if you're having a midlife crisis. I was, <laughs> about eight months ago before I, you know, I was able to go to Morgan and Morgan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that ultimately it's like, you just have to pray like, okay, God, break my heart for what breaks yours wow that's good and so it's like taking the time pray that like however many words that is like you know 10 12 words i don't know yeah um but just sit there pray that and shut up <laughs> right <laughs> so many times guilty of this um so i can speak about it um i pray and then i move on with my life yeah but prayer should be a conversation and a conversation isn't one person speaking the whole time and then jet. That's so good. Yeah, sit down and listen. So God, break my heart for what breaks yours. And then just listen to that. Mm -hmm. So many people, it's different. Some people, it's, for me, something that really uh, breaks my heart is uh, homelessness. Yeah. And ultimately, like, what I want to create and put like, where this would eventually lead is to help get people off the streets, mm -hmm. free from addiction if there is addiction, free from bondage different mindsets limiting beliefs and get them into uh, being able to provide provide for themselves again yeah that's something that god's broken my heart for and like mm -hmm. now it's just like okay like how can i develop a plan to help do that um i think people and god will align you with the right people once you yeah. to that um two of my great friends erica and sarah um they started this um uh, everybody eats a uh, nonprofit down here um so once a month on uh one Saturday a month, we'll go out and just feed and clothe the homeless. Wow. It's like, you know, I'm going, I serve underneath them. I yeah. go help out every time I can. And um, so I think like you listen and you're like, God, what breaks, what breaks your heart? You know, break my heart for that. Mm -hmm. And I think you just listen because there's stuff that's going on across the world. So for me, um, homelessness and the homeless population um, is something that, really I want to serve and, and help eliminate that's a fire I want to put out yeah. for some people it's human trafficking for some some people it's social injustice for some people you know there's you know saving the turtles like it could be anything yeah right um but it's just taking that time to listen um and do that and then taking the steps towards that but then I also feel like there's micro fires like every single day like okay wherever your job is yeah <laughs> there's going to be some sort of fire that pops up, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, someone forgot to submit a deadline, so now it's on you, or, you know, someone else got fired. Now you have to, you know, go cover them and pick up their shifts or, you know, whatever it may be, like a machine broke, you know, mm -hmm. customers unhappy. It's like, those are the micro fires. And I think if you look for those and just always be a person that's willing to say, hey, like, 
that's not my responsibility, but I'll still come help you out. Yeah. You know, I didn't cause this, but because I care about you or I care about this organization, I care about this job, whatever it may be, whatever your motive is. Okay. Like, yeah, let's go put out that fire. Yeah. Uh, it could be something like on my desk, you know, as an attorney, like, my whole life is a fire, <laughs> but it's like every day. Okay. Like I'm going to go, I'm going to serve the people um, yeah. or tag on Morgan Morgan's literally for the people. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's just like every day there's a constant fire to go put out. So um, I think it's just something you want to be aware of um, mm -hmm. macro fire, something that's more personal to your life and yeah. a big grand mission for your life. Um, but then also your day-to-day -day stuff. Like how can you constantly be like looking mm -hmm. and, finding ways to put those out that's so good and what i realized is when you start putting out the the micro fires that'll prepare you to put out the macro fires if that makes sense it will right, give right, you right. yeah it will give you the discipline and the principles you need because so many people want to tackle the world how about you tackle your backyard what's going on in your neighborhood like we all want world peace how about you establish war, like neighborhood peace right do you know <laughs> your neighbor's name yeah like yeah so like you, you want the world to love. How about you love your neighbor? Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so um, your um your two friends, um, everyone eats. Do they have like a website or something or uh like Twitter or something? Uh, or Instagram, Twitter. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um let's put it in the uh in I'll the put it in the description box. Yeah, so that's yeah. that shoot me the link and then um I will put it in it. Because that's really that's really cool. So yeah, I'll put it in the description box. Awesome. I love them and they're doing great and they happen to also both be attorneys so we kind of bond on so many different levels so Good. it's cool to do that with them yeah yeah because at the end of the day we're all meant to help each other and if it's for the greater good like let's let's do it and if, if it's for the for the name of jesus if jesus gets the glory from it i'm down for it <laughs> <laughs> let's go <laughs> and let's like go. how you said like prayer is not most people think prayer is a monologue but it's a dialogue but I've been guilty too. I'd be like, in Jesus' name, I pray, and I'm out. I'm out the door. I, I was like, <laughs> I haven't even said amen yet, but I'm gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we have to wait on the Lord and see His direction. Right. Like before Jesus was going up to heaven, John chapter 16, verse 13, He says, "When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but He will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future." So we we have we we have the advocate. We have like the inside scoop on our side, but we never give him time or opportunity to tell us what what fires we need to put out. Exactly. So we need to we need to like pause, like you said, take some time, and in your words, shut up. <laughs> shut up. If it's ten minutes, like if it's in the shower. For me, I don't know why, but God speaks clear to me when I'm in the shower. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So if you have a long commute to work, just turn off the radio and just have God speak to you. Don't close your eyes because you're on the road. But <laughs> yeah, Tesla, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> so thank you for answering that question. My um, fifth question is, out of the three fires you told me, is the method the same in all three types of fires? Um, yes and no. First, pray, always. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I would say for one and two, I would say yes. Okay. Right? Because you're actually in something. Yeah. Right? You're either in it by default or your own design. Um I think that's how anything life works. Like um, Pastor Rich always says, you know, culture in life happens by default or by design. Like you can either create it um, or you put yourself in it or it just happens to you, right? That's good. Um, so I think through that, you know, it's a great question because whenever you're in something, it's probably, gonna, it's a little bit more difficult, I would say, if you're not honest with yourself to get out of the fires that you put yourself in. Yeah. But if you're honest with yourself, then it's a little bit easier to get out of those, right? Yeah. Um, so I think one, like, yeah, first response should always be to pray. Um, I think also it just kind of depends on what your situation is. Mm -hmm. um, because getting fired from a job is significantly different than being in jail for life. Yeah. You know? Um, so I think 
the methods, I, I don't know, that they come and go, to be honest. Um, but if your purpose is always focused on Jesus and what he's trying to get you, get out of you in that season, mm-hmm. I think the method long-term is the same. Okay. You know, just always just focusing on, all right, God, what do you want me to learn from this? No matter if I put myself in it or it happened to me, like, what do you want me to learn from it? How can I get better? How can I improve? And how can you ultimately get the glory for this? So good. If you kind of are able to answer those questions, then, yeah. you know, the methods may be different, but, you know, the outcome will ultimately be the same. Okay. So it's not, so it depends what season you're in. So sometimes it, the method could be the same and sometimes the methods can be different, but the takeaway point is, Always pursue God. Always chase after God for his wisdom in the situation. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because, I mean, how God leads you out of a situation may be significantly different than how he leads me out of the same situation. For sure. Right? Yeah. It's like, I don't know, there's so many different types of diets or types of workouts, right? Like, what works for you may not be the same that works for me. Like, yeah. You may need to do keto. Well, I may need to cut out fats completely two yeah. totally different diets you know <laughs> but if our, the ultimate goal is for us to achieve living a healthy lifestyle mm-hmm. then we're ultimately going to get there right yeah it depends on it depends on your specific circumstance and how god even created you or designed you oh yeah. that's good so you just gotta get the wisdom right you just gotta <laughs> uh, you, you gotta <laughs> Yeah, you, you got to go after the person who gave you the calling from the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then for the third, I think <clears throat> it's really just I would call fire you call to put out because you're not necessarily in it. If yeah. You're out, you know, the thing of a burning, burning building, oftentimes, like, best way to put it out is from the outside so you don't come down with a collapsing building. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, oh, oh, where was I going with that? That is what you were saying earlier. Like, it just comes down to obedience. Yeah. Right. And if you're obedient, God will show you the way, you know, probably just one step at a time. Like, it's either that or you just have to take a blind step of faith. Like, God (laughs) oftentimes shows you the end goal or the next step. (laughs) Usually not both. No. (laughs) Uh, But if you're obedient and that's everything, it doesn't matter exactly where the path takes you, but your obedience will ultimately lead you to putting out that fire that he's called you to. That's so good. So my follow-up question to you is, when you're putting out the fire, how do you remain compassionate for someone who's going through the fire that you're called to put out? Because, you know, sometimes you look, like, in the Christian circles, we're like, here's five, five steps you can do. If you don't do the five steps, then you're not doing something right. That's why you're still in your fire. So how do you remain filled with grace when you're helping someone put out their fire <laughs> their prayer <laughs> sometimes you just want to be like man you are an idiot uh, <laughs> right like can we be honest here um yeah right i think it's just realizing that at one point you were still making those same mistakes yeah that's good like, that's good like okay if, like the ultimate teacher is someone that's actually been through something before mm-hmm. like aa for example aa is led by former people who've gone through AA. Yeah. Like, don't talk to me about getting through an addiction if you've never been through that. Yeah. Because it gives you so much more credibility. It gives you so much more empathy, Mm -hmm. I think, right? Like, our world is lacking a lot of empathy. Yeah. It's hard because, like, sympathy and empathy are different, right? Mm -hmm. Sympathy is I feel bad for you. Empathy is, like, hey, I can honestly feel what you're going through. I feel what you're going through, yeah. Right? Um, I watched this video one time, and it was just, like, there's this guy, he was um, pretty clear he was homeless and he was blind. And uh, he had like a sign and it was like, um, like whatever, I, I forgot exactly what it said, but it typical, like, help me, like, I'm poor, I'm blind. Yeah. No one can empathize with that, mm-hmm. you know? But someone came by and so like people, I like, give him like, you know, a couple of pennies, quarters, dollar here and there. But then someone came by and you know, took his sign, rode on the other side, it's a beautiful day outside and I can't see it or I can't experience it. And it's like, that creates so much more empathy, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, like I'm looking around. It is beautiful. Wow. Like I would hate to not be able to experience this. Yeah. So they're empathizing. It was just like the amount of 
charity people were showing him after being on empathize was so much more. Wow. Um, so I think you just have to look back like, man, no one is better than anybody else. You've just yeah. had different life experiences. You're at a different season of life than someone else. You know, so it's like you have to look back and be like, hey, okay. Yeah, it may, it may take this person a little bit longer to learn those lessons, but it probably took you some time too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> like, and so just going back, taking a step back and um, instead of being up on a pedestal, like, you know, preaching down or like speaking mm-hmm. down on someone, it's like, all right, let's get on their level. You know, like I go back to the story where Jesus, he's, <clears throat> the crowds are too much for him on the, on the shore, right? Yeah. So he, like if you go in and this is something like, I don't know, I was picked up one time. It's like, he went into the boat, took the boat onto the water, and then he sat down to continue preaching. Mm. Like, think about that for a second. Like, if there's anyone that's ever walked this earth that can say, hey, do this. You're doing this wrong. Like, hey, you're, you're a failure. You're, you should, why aren't you following me? Why did you screw up again? Yeah. It was Jesus, right? Yeah. But instead, and first of all, this shows like, just the power that was in his words, because if he came out into the shore, just sat down, like he's getting on your level, right? Yeah. So it's like, we're help having it, like, or we're going through a time where we're allowed to go teach someone about a lesson you learned. Don't come in from like a dominating, like do this, 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 but it's like, hey, all right, let's sit down. Let's have a conversation about it. Yeah. Because then you're relatable, you're approachable. And when you're approachable, people are more receptive to you. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, if they're more receptive, then they're probably going to take those lessons a little bit more to heart. You're going to help them to get out of that situation a little bit quicker than telling them, Hey, you're doing this wrong. Yeah. You know, like a speed up. So I think it's just like one, remembering that you've been there Two, probably took you some time. Three, we're called to help. You know, not everyone's going to run at the same speed, but Mm -hmm. you can help them go in the same direction. We're yeah. pointing them in the right direction. Then I think that's ultimately what you have to keep in mind. Man, that's so good, Tanner. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Because I think sometimes our Christians, they forget that the same blood that saved them is the same blood that's available to other people. Mm, yep. Sometimes we go get into the church and instead, instead of it being a, a house for everyone, it becomes an ex- exclusive country club. So you have to remember that even someone is, if someone is being promiscuous, if someone's a prostitute, if someone's doing heroin, if someone is looking at porn, the same blood that saved you from your pride is the same blood that can save them for whatever they're going through. <laughs> and Pete Rich laid this out so beautifully a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I don't know. That's my guy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you don't know where they're at in their walk too. Yeah. Just because someone's a drug addict and that's what they come into church and that's what people label them as mm-hmm. doesn't mean that they're not at home just on their knees begging God to help get them out of that. Attention. Yeah. Right. But the person that comes and gets it all, has it all together. Oh, like, you know, he's wearing the right clothes. He, mm-hmm. you know, he's got himself put together. Man, they could go home and they could be cheating on their spouse. Yeah. You know, so. I think you just can't ever judge someone from, you know, what's portrayed on the outside because mm-hmm. it ultimately it's like, what's their heart's position, right? Mm-hmm. Is their heart still chasing after Jesus? Like it may be a couple of steps behind on the journey, but yeah. if they're running the right direction, like, okay, let's help them gain speed in that right direction instead of like just automatically putting them out. Yeah, for sure. It's like the story when um, Jesus gave the parable saying that, there's two men that came to go pray. One was a Pharisee and the other one was a tax collector. And then the Pharisee says, I thank, thank you, God, that I'm not like these other people, like this tax collector, that I fast twice a day and all this other stuff. And then, then Jesus said, the tax collector didn't even look up to heaven. He just beat his chest and said, I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me. And then Jesus said that God heard the prayer of the tax collector and not the prayer of the religious person, the Pharisee. Right. So, like you said, it's all about your heart posture so i I truly believe that you shouldn't be a you shouldn't be going to put out fires if you're going to be prideful the whole time because that helps nobody oh my gosh because no one's going to listen to you anyway yeah right or like Like, you post about it i don't like when people like i understand you post like you have a business and you post it for like publicity reasons but people like 
Um, I'm giving I'm giving this five dollars to this homeless person. I don't like when people do that. Like, let it be between let it be between you and God. Because that person who's getting the money, how do you think they feel? They probably feel humiliated. They probably feel like shameful and guilty that like now they're using my dysfunction or my need to let them make, let themselves look good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that that's just how I feel. I, I if you give give in private. <laughs> Yeah, when you pray, pray in private. Yeah. Like, That's just how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That was that was so good. Um, my sixth question to you is how do you deal with friends or even family members who can be discouraging to the call God has placed in your life? Let's repeat that one more time. How do you deal with friends or even family members? Who can be discouraging to the calling God has placed in your life? Man, I think that's where you ultimately have to decide <clears throat> really who are you going to, whose voice are you going to listen to? Yeah. Because I think it, I obviously it hits a little bit closer home when it's a friend or family member that's being discouraging about the calling mm -hmm. that God's put on your life. But if it's truly God that's put that on your life, mm -hmm. then it shouldn't matter who's telling you this or that yeah because you're listening to one voice right yeah. um but i do ultimately think that you should probably listen to those people because if they're like all right you're going down a road and i my mom has done this many times um i'm going down a road i'm putting myself in these fires it's like why are you doing that don't do that i don't agree with that yeah you're gonna get hurt like maybe you should take into consideration like their heart behind it yeah but you know and look okay like oh yeah maybe i should have listened to her right yeah but if it's truly what god's put on your heart mm -hmm. then he's either going to teach you a lesson along the way that's going to help a bigger purpose mm -hmm. or he's going to get all the glory from some miraculous thing that's going to take place yeah and then those same people that were discouraging and doubting you are going to ultimately be like oh man that's my son oh that's my best friend like like you are with me in the struggle. I knew you could do it. I told him he was going to do it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then, you know, they're going to be hitting you up later. Like, hey, thank you. Can, no, can you hook me up? Like, probably not. Sorry. No, I, no, I'm not. You want to hook me up with a little encouragement when that's all that I needed instead of having to encourage myself. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, that's not the right position either to be in, by the way. But <laughs> it's really tough sold in this later by his brothers and came back and ultimately gave back to him um but um <laughs> yeah it's okay to be human like that would have been the hardest thing for me to do like oh yeah i still like y'all so much even though y'all sold me into slavery but sorry god knew what he was doing yeah. um so god forgive me i, I need to work on that <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're human like you said we're human we all have our human know. moments <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely but yeah i think how do you deal with it is it's like honestly i hear them out but hearing, listening, and taking their advice is totally different. Um, I think it's just, you always have to just go back to prayer. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, God's called me to do this. Like, I'm going to tune out everybody else. Like, and just go for it. Go all in. Yeah. And, you know, if they're still there down the line, awesome. Mm -hmm. Use everything for your glory. Give back to them. Serve them continuously. Um I think ultimately God's going to get the glory out of everything, even if that's winning their heart back over for him. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. It's just sometimes you have to let people go, though. Sometimes they will never buy into your, your calling. Some people might be jealous of your calling. So maybe that's why they intentionally trying to put you down. Can we, can we talk about that real quick? Like, how do you deal with jealous friends or jealous family members and the way they are challenging their jealousies through discouraging you? So I don't know if you're going through this or like, so how would you, if you were in that position, how would you deal with that? That you know that they're jealous. The Holy Spirit told you like, this person is jealous of you. That's why they keep throwing you this stuff. So how do you deal with that? Um, I think two things. One, <clears throat> you could continue to serve them, mm -hmm. show them grace and show them love. Um, because I think that's ultimately what Jesus would do. Yeah. Um, but two, if they're really that jealous and, you know, we'll, use the 2021 20, if they're your hater um <laughs> then are they really your friend mm. and are they really in your corner yeah um you know i think ultimately like you have different circles of friends or people or acquaintances mm -hmm. uh, 
you can even look at Jesus. He had 12 disciples, but he really had three just like tight four ones. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Three. And it's like, you know, he had the others that were still there, but then it's like, you still had Judas. Yeah. But I think if you look at it, like, okay, he's shying away from, he's more of an acquaintance at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have acquaintances, you have friends, and you have your, your homies, right? And so it's like, okay, maybe you should reevaluate what sphere that person's in in your life. Yeah. Maybe at that point, if they're really that jealous and like discouraging to you, you should move them out of your homie section to a friend section or out of their friends into an acquaintance. Yeah. You know, if that's still too close and to remove them completely. You know? <laughs> yeah. I but, believe, I truly believe you can love from afar. <laughs> you don't want to get me close for me to love you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's so many different ways to handle it, but it's just like you have to determine how much influence do you want them to have in your life and That's good. Into, your, into your mindset, and you place them accordingly. Yeah. And then you love them and you serve them accordingly. So That's so good. So I just want to talk to the people real quick. If you're feeling discouraged or rejected, remember God has called you. For greatness the same god that called you is the same god that's going to put you through the same god that got you to the process is the same god that's going to get you through the process and get you to the promise so if you're in disappointment if you're in discouragement or if you're in rejection just know that god is with you right now in psalm 34 verse 18 it says that the lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit so just be encouraged because at the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what your friends say. It doesn't matter what your family members say. The thing that matters is what God has spoken over your life. Absolutely. So my seven question to you is how does a person stay on fire? You know, like we grew up in the, host, the hustle culture and, you know, you got to grind, grind, grind and you need to see people burning out. So how does someone stay on fire? So in other words, how does someone prevent burnout and remain faithful in the fire god has caused you in it's, it's crazy that, that fire causes burns right yeah <laughs> i know right <laughs> i'm saying man you have so many different connotations um man i think ultimately is you have to know your why you have that's to good. know your why that's really good um, and if and your why has to be something internal right yeah. if you're doing something to make money one, you'll never make enough money. Two, there's always going to be someone that has more money than you. Um, you know, and that's just going to lead to burnout. But if you have such like an internal reason, internal purpose for doing whatever you're going to do, you always have to go back to that. Like, always go back to the, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. You know, yeah. God, where do you want me? What do you want me to help with? And if you can go back to the beginning, back to where it was simple, you know, I think that that's ultimately what's going to keep you going. Um, And there's really nothing else to it um, because life is going to get hard. There's going to be days you don't feel like doing it, but are you going to show up anyway? Yeah. Is your why going to be stronger than your feelings? Is your conviction going to be stronger than your feelings? Are you going to continue to persevere and through those hard times? Yeah. And kind of like I was sharing earlier, like, man, there's some days like on Wednesday I wake up and I don't want to send a text out to, you know, hundreds of people. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway, not because I'm getting anything out of it, but because that's what God's called me to be faithful to, and what He's called me a steward. Um, and I think that's like such a, a crazy word is this word stewardship, right? Yeah. Because, and I actually was just teaching this course um, called Personal Stewardship, so that's <laughs> kind of <laughs> that words has been really heavy on my heart lately. It's like, yeah. man, I want to. Steward everything properly, right? You can overwater a plant. Yeah. Yeah. You can underwater a plant and also kill it. (laughs) But if you're stewarding that plant properly, you know how much water it's going to take. You know how much effort you're going to have to put in to give that um, everything it needs. And so I think to prevent burnout, you have to go at the right pace. That's so good. You have to give what you need to give. Yeah. Don't do any more. Surely don't do any less. Yeah. But but if you have, like you were talking about earlier, like with Moses, what's in your hands? Yeah. And if you can steward and use what's in your hands, God's going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you ever ask, hope, dream, or imagine. Come on. That's good. And then you're going to get some of those external rewards, some of the external, you know, things that, you know, 
God's also put on your heart, but that's just going to be like icing on the cake because the internal satisfaction is going to be so much greater than anything that this world could ever give you from the outside. That is so good. I think that is very important. Like, like remember your why. Cause like, even when, like you're talking about Wednesdays, you don't want to put out no content, but then you remember why God called you to do what you're doing. You're like, all right, you know, I don't feel like doing it. Holy Spirit, I need you at this moment because I got nothing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> like literally, I'll, I'll pray that word for word what you yeah. just did. And it's like, okay. Then it's like, okay, just let your fingers start going. Like, yeah. Like, here we go. So. Like, I, I feel the same way because, you know, started this YouTube channel and I put content out Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, sometimes I'm just... I'm just not feeling it. I'm like, Holy Spirit, if I don't get a word from you and then out of nowhere, I'll just be at the laptop and then words will start coming out. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, that's so good. That's, remember your why. Because yeah. if you don't remember your why, then you will misuse the, the platform or the blessing God has given you. There it is. Like, there. even after you make it big, you still got to remember your why. Exactly. Or, you know, there's a lot of people who fall from grace. I don't like that term fall for grace because we really fall onto grace because we miss, you know, you know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we fall from glory onto grace, but there's people that just fall from that because they forgot their why. Right. And forgot who got them there to begin with. That's so good. Let's talk about that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> is what I realize is people they forget how God was the one closer to them than any brother when they're going through it. But right. now they get up there, they forget about God. They're like, new phone, who's this? You know? <laughs> so they forget about God. So let's talk about that real quick. Man, it's so much harder. In my experience, it's so much harder to, let's just talk about prayer life for a second. It's so much harder to continue to pray when you're on the mountaintop. Yeah, I agree. Because it's so easy to pray whenever... God, I'm struggling right now. I can't do this. But it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, he hears you. Yeah. Well, let's also pray that s with that same intensity when he does give you the breakthrough. When yeah, for sure. When he does get you to the top. Whenever he does provide. You know, it's really easy. Oh, glory to God. Then move on with your life. Right? Mm -hmm. How many people do that? Like looking at award shows, right? Like. I don't know their story. I don't know their background, but I'd be willing to bet that at some point at any of those award shows, people haven't prayed all year, but glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. What God are you praying to? <laughs> right? But it's like, yeah. no, let's give the same, pray with the same intensity throughout every season, whether you're in the valley, you're climbing the mountain or you're on the peak. Yeah. Like, pray with that same intensity because that's what's going to keep you going from, one mountaintop to the next. That's good. Because it's, it's that all. Yeah, because it's good. That's good. Because it's one thing to get the blessing, but it's another thing to maintain a blessing. Yeah. So I think a lot harder to win the second championship than it is the first. Yeah, that's why there's not a lot of back-to-back -back champions. Exactly. <laughs> because like when you're on top, everyone is gunning for you now. Before, like God like hid you and you you in obscurity and like okay, I can just work on my trades, but now when you're on the top. Now you got to pray against people who they want to be, be be your friend, but they're just using you. Now you got to pray against pride. Now you got to pray that, God, this is a good idea, but is this a God idea? So there's too much things that when you're on the top that you just got to pray for. So that's a great, <laughs> that's a great point, Tanner. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And then you also have a target on your back. Yeah. Like, let's use sports, for example. If you win a championship, you're the biggest target for every single team next year. Yep. Because people want what you have. Yeah. So now not only are you fighting for something, you're also having to fight against something else. Mm -hmm. So no, good. definitely just got to stay prayed up even more so, I think, I think at that point. Yeah, for sure. Pride, pride will tear you down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it very easily, too. Yeah. Because you'll go from being on a mountaintop to why am I in this fire right now real quick if, if you're not careful. So That's so good. That's so good. Is there anything else you want to add? Man, I just want to kind of piggyback what you were saying earlier. It's just like, man, like, no matter what season of your life you're in, like, God is for you. He's in your corner. He's yeah. going to reveal himself to you in ways that you never thought possible, you never thought imaginable. If you're struggling, if you're going through it right now, like, stay prayed up. 
Um, also, I just want to, you know, goes without saying, like, if I can be a resource to you at any moment, whether it's you or whoever it is that's watching, like, feel free to reach out to me. Um, literally, I get so passionate and fired up just from helping other people. Yeah. Um, discover their purpose, discover their why. Um, so, yeah, so you're not alone, even if you feel like it. God's still with you. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't left you. And if he hasn't, then, you know, I want to do everything I can to um, follow the same way. So that's so good. That's so good. So you you better be encouraged. You have Tana in your <laughs> corner. You got me in your corner. Because th the thing I look at it is if they win, we win. Because <laughs> we're playing for the same team. So <laughs> if they win, we win. So that's how I look at it. But Tanner, um, that's all the questions I had. So thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for giving us <laughs> practical tips how to get fired up and how to stay fired up and how to like ignore the voices and the discouragement and the voice of anxiety and just keep pushing forward and the calling and purpose God has given us. And uh, thank you for having me, man. Honestly, this is such a Honor and blessing. Never in a million years would I have thought back at WT when we probably, I'm not going to speak on your behalf. I was not living the life God's completely called me to live. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it was a, it was a college, a college life, you know. Yeah, but it's awesome just how we're able to cross paths again. Um, and yeah, and doing this and ultimately, I can't wait to see where this goes for you, man. I'm so excited for you. Thank so. you so much. And I can't wait to see what, you know, the because we talked offline about the things God has shown you. I'm um, going to keep it private until God does it, but I'm excited for you too. I'm excited yeah. for what God's going to do in your life. So before we end episode five of Saturday Conversations, <laughs> Tanner, we're going to play a little game called right. This or That so, so people will know you a little bit more, all right? So I'm going to give you two options, and you just give me the one, uh, one option you choose, and at the end, I'll give you my guess because I already guess what I think you're going to do. So if it's below three, we need to hang out more. If it's above three, I know you pretty well. <laughs> all, right, all right, cool. How many are we going with? Uh, we're going with five. Five? All right. Yeah. So the first one is, which one is your favorite disciple? Or, yeah, favorite disciple, John or Peter? Oof. I, I think I relate more to Peter. Okay. So um, when it comes to sports, Dolphins or Heat? I'm a basketball guy, so I'm going with the Heat. Okay. Um, if you had to move, where, where would you move to? L.A. or New York? Ooh, I would say I've never been to L.A., so the safer bet would be New York. You should go visit L.A. L.A. is nice. I know. I want to. I just haven't made it out yeah. there. <laughs> <In 2020, laughs> no, you it's know. all the place. I just haven't. <laughs> a long flight from Miami, man. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had to order pizza, what would you pick? Pizza Hut or Domino's? Domino's, hands down. All right. And then if you had to wear a type of shoes to hoop in, because you say you like basketball, what would you pick? Nikes or Adidas? Nike. Nike. All right. I think I got a good three out of five. All right. We can, we can be better. We can be better. So I, I picked John because, you know, everybody likes John. Even John liked himself because he called himself the disciple of Jesus' love. I knew you were a hooper because we used to hoop. Um, so I picked the Heat. I thought you'd pick L.A. because the weather was similar to Miami. I know, but I've just got so many friends in New York. I'm like, oh, it'd be fun. Exactly. One of my best, one of my good friends down here is moving up there too. So I'm just like, yeah. oh man, it'd be fun. Yeah, that when I made these uh guesses, I did not know this information. So <laughs> <laughs> so I think Domino's because you know pizza has been they they slipping. So Domino's. Don't sleep on the hand tossed pan pizza. Yes. <laughs> and Nike, because I don't know who really hoops in Adidas really. So <laughs> offline, I don't want to put any more like bad press out there for Adidas with Nike all day. <laughs> Nike was going through it too, but we leave it at that. <laughs> so before we end, Tanner, do you just mind praying for us? Whatever the Lord places on your heart, um, do you just mind praying for us real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh dear Jesus, Lord, just thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done, giving and bless us with Lord God. Uh, or I just want to say thank you. Thank you for uh, Edwards. He's just stepping out in faith and uh, he's just following the call that you put on his life, Lord God, and, and starting this channel, Lord God. I pray that you just continue to, to use him, speak through him, Lord. I, I pray that um, every single conversation he has, every single uh, video he puts out just has your hand on it, Lord God. I pray that uh, it falls on the eyes and ears of the people that's supposed to, Lord God. I pray that everyone that uh, watches every single video is just encouraged, 
Um, and ultimately, you're just giving the glory for everything we've got. I pray for the people that are out there who, who may feel alone, who may feel abandoned, who may feel like uh, you've forsaken them. Lord God, I pray that you uh, just come in their life right now and remind them, Lord God, that you're still there with them, that you're still still there for them, Lord God, and you're the same God who overcame um, death, hell, and the grave, Lord God, and you ultimately resurrected to give us uh, eternal life. So uh, if you can do that, you can do anything in our lives right now, Lord God. So um, I pray that you just continue to uh, do more than we ever ask, hope, dream, or imagine, Lord God. Um, just thank you for uh, all that you've had have ahead for us, and uh, we just believe that the best is truly yet to come. So we give you all honor, glory. It's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tanner, thank you. <laughs> thank you for this. This thank you, man. Like I know a lot of people's lives would be transformed by watching this conversation. And a lot of people know you, people in my um, circle and people in your circle will know me too. So I'm just glad that we're able to come back together, reconnect the Buffalo pride Let's in, go, man. in the glory of Jesus. So just to pray for you real quick, Father, Lord, I just um, thank you for Tanner. I just pray that you grant and give him the desires of his heart. I pray that you continue to give him favor. I pray that you give him strength as you um, as he's walking out the calling and purpose that you have placed in his life. I pray that you bless him. I pray that you bless his family. And I pray that you continue to be with them. And I pray that he will realize that the best is yet to come in his life. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. And we give you the praise. We say, blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Did I receive that? I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. And uh, no hopefully problem. we'll be able to connect in person soon. No problem. Um, I know, right? <laughs> so yeah. thank you for tuning in to episode five of Com Saturday Conversations. Tanner, where can people find you? Uh, probably just Instagram is the best way. Um, just at Tanner underscore Lakey. I think I'll put so. it in the description box. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's really it. I'm not really too active on too many other platforms right now. Okay. Um, mainly because I'm just trying to steward the little that I can. So, so yeah, just hit me up on Instagram. I um, also have a form if you want to receive uh, these Wednesday text messages. Uh, if you can put that link in the description as well, I'd love I to will. send that out to you. So if you're watching this, I'd love to be a resource to you. Um, if you don't want that, then that's totally cool. I'll still love those <laughs> So. I, I am I am signed up. I'm signed up for the weekly text. So I, I get encouraged when I just don't want to do anything Wednesday. I get the message like seven o'clock in the morning. I was like, man, my brother Tanner's working. So let me work. Let me <laughs> grind. You got the time change. That's eight o'clock for me. So it's a real <laughs> yeah. <time>. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I wake up to encouragement. So my suggestion is to, the link will be in the description box below. So my suggestion is you sign up. There's no gimmicks. There's no, we're not going to ask you for your credit card. Or your social security my card, card or your, <laughs> this is your cell phone number, all right? I look at it. So is this your name, your cell phone number? And if you want to put your email, you can. And that's it. That's that's all we're asking from you. We're not asking for your credit score. We're not asking for any of that. Maybe blood type. I don't know. So maybe we're, blood maybe. type. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, we just want to encourage people through this text message. Um, um, every Wednesday. So make sure you sign up for it. So once again, I want to say a special thank you to my brother, Tanner Lakey. Look how far we've come 11 years later and we're out here. <laughs> Go Bucks. <laughs> we're, we're, we're out here. So I'm just grateful to call you brother. I'm grateful to be fighting alongside with you in this battle against the kingdom of darkness. So I'm just glad to have you on my side and whatever you need from me, I already told you this offline, you can contact me you can text me. We can FaceTime. Whatever you need, you have a brother. You have a partner here. We're fighting for you, all right? I appreciate that, man. Same here. Same no problem. Here. So, everyone, join the conversation in the comment section below. Tell us what um, stood out to you in the conversations. If you have any prayer requests, put in the comment section below. Also, Tanner and I will look over it and be praying for you all week. Um, if you have anything else, put it in the comment section. I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Let's go.